जी डॉक्टर साहब रेडी है शुरू करें आप म्यूट पे आ, आप सुन सकते हैं मुझे जी जी अब आवाज आ रही नेटवर्क का इश्यू तो नहीं आ रहा क्योंकि मैंने डेटा पे उस पर ले गया क्योंकि इलेवन यहाँ लाइट चली जाती जी इलेवन हाँ जी बिजली तो यहाँ भी बंद है लेकिन आई थिंक वी शुड स्टार्ट नो राइट Uh, Dr. Abdul Samad Sheikh holds a PhD in Islamic studies from International Islamic University Islamabad and a postdoc from University of Exeter UK. He has published several articles at various journals and conferences on the topic of sira and hadith and Islamic studies. He is the author of uh, a book on sira titled The Prophet of Excellent Moral Values an Anthology. He is currently an assistant professor at International Islamic University Islamabad and has previously served at Dawa Academy of the same university. Uh, Dr. Abdul Samad Sheikh, I invite you to please speak on today's topic, which is what was madrasa, the tradition of learning in South Asia and dilemma of modern madrasa. Dr. Abdul Samad Sheikh. Uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <coughs> Thank you uh, for this moderation and uh, uh, I, I thank all organizers of this institute for giving me a chance to present my views on, on modern madrasa and what was the actual uh, learning tradition in pre-modern South Asia. Uh, I think all you can hear me well. I just want to share that's, that's right. Yeah, please uh, go. That's great. Thank you. Uh, 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 yes, uh, there are some reflections uh, which uh, appear from uh, my title of, of the talk to now, uh, today, and I will talk about madrasa, uh, the mo especially the modern mas madrasa, whether it is uh, uh, the continuation of uh, pre modern learning. 
aphasia or it's uh, new of its uh, we can say that it was uh, an uh, uh, urgent response of Verma in 19th century towards the colonial uh, changes which were happening in South Asia, especially in, uh, in late 18th century, 19th century. So that, that will be the, the topic of uh, talk to, today. Uh, I'm going to uh, uh, share with you people my slides here. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm going to share my slides with you people, so it will be easy to get my uh, views. Uh, yeah, we can see that. Can you see my? Yeah. Oh, oh, that's great. Can you change slides? Yeah. Does it does it work now? Yeah, can you try to change slides? Yeah, yeah, I can. Uh, uh, can. Can you see the title page of my slides? Yeah, that's right. Um, that's great. So, uh, today's talk will be consisting of two parts initially the tradition of learning in pre modern South Asia and the dilemma of modern Madrasa. Uh, Okay, let's come to the uh, main uh, slide of today. Learning tradition in medieval uh, Islam, state and education. Uh, in medieval Islam, uh, uh, when we uh, mean by medieval Islam, it me it it's meant that uh, the time period beginning from uh, 8th century to, to 15th and 16th century, usually it's meant by medieval, uh, uh, medieval time period. Uh, where the early medieval, modern, uh, uh, medium, and late medieval time. So, if you see uh, the history of Madrasa, so we 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 don't see any Madrasa. There were some institutions; they were called Madrasa, or uh, some of them they called them Halaqa, and some of them they called them Maktab because they were linked and associated with mosque. And a lot of scholars. Uh, they established this kind of halakas uh, uh, adjacent to the mosque, or uh, uh, they were their drawing rooms of their homes. So, used to impart education according to their uh, specialization. So, but before Nizami of Baghdad, the formal institution of learning, uh, where we, we the, uh, where we can uh, see a lot of scholar, they are imparting education on this different subjects and uh, the pupils they are get uh, getting together there to to learn uh, different disciplines uh, in islamic studies or in any discipline what was before it so i i would say uh, 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 the state regulated system was not there and ulama were there and they were imparting education uh, uh hello you is it okay yeah yeah please go ahead i've switched off uh, your uh, video so uh, that, that we can that, hear you properly that, there is uh, some hitter if uh, you can that, switch to wi-fi that will be uh, good. That's good. uh no actually uh, i have i don't have electricity right now so i have connected my laptop with my data from cell phone oh. So uh, that's a problem, I think, uh, because I, I was not ex expecting uh, uh, yeah, electricity will disappear today, but unfortunately it went wrong. Uh, anyway, so before the establishment of the army of Baghdad, I will come later to explain it. Uh, uh, how did the rulers, especially the Seljuk government, uh, establish in 11th century uh, Nizami of Baghdad? What were the reason behind it, behind the establishment of this? There was some kind of uh, uh, street patronage uh, of education. Uh, uh, so, but they, they they couldn't establish and regulate madrasa or this kind of learning institution, a formal institution where uh, uh, a student can learn a lot of uh, disciplines uh, under one roof uh, from different scholar. It was not there. But they were individual personalities. They were patronized by ulama. So when we say, uh, uh, sorry, by rulers or emperor of Muslim states, uh, when we see a, a, a 
ulama uh, when we see emperors or rulers patronizing ilm and ulama so we we have a lot big history in this regard uh, beginning from the time of umar ibn al khattab he established a lot of makatib in kufa and other parts of the muslim uh, uh, muslims very uh, uh, prominent in this regard and he was a big scholar uh, and later became emperor he also patronized and later we see this collection in, in, in late first century uh, and he he appreciated and encouraged to to collect all the tradition of, of the prophets they are very prominent in the Islamic history and later we see in second century in, uh, mid, in middle of second century of Jafar al mansur he, he was the uh, I won't say mentor of Imam Malik but he has good linkages with the ulama of that time, and he patronized not only Imam Malik, uh, uh, but also Ibn Muqaffa, the Persian, uh, the, the person who was uh, 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 the, uh, who who was who has a Persian origin, but later converted to Islam, and he has a good link with Abu Abdullah Safa and other rulers of uh, Abbasi, and uh, he was patronized by them, and he 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 did a good job and contributed a lot of things in this regard, and his. Work of the of Hikmah, which emerged uh, at the time of Harun or Rashid, but it was established earlier in, in second century as of Yen Hindrabic literature. And he was patronized by these uh, Safah and Mansu and other caliphs and emperors of Abbasid. Harun Rashid in third century also emerged uh, late, uh, in, in, in late second century. He also emerged as a, uh, as a ruler who patronized ulama. And uh, uh, we, 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 I mentioned all these need a lot of examples, just like the relation of Imam Zuhri with Umayyad uh, uh, emperors. Uh, it, it, it was very famous, and a lot of scholars from Tabi'in, they were patronized by, by a scholar, Umayyad a scholar. And uh, Tabi'in scholars, they were patronized by, because, because Ibn Muqaffa was not a religious scholar. He was a philosopher, and he, he worked on philosophy and, 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 and translation of, uh, of So that's why uh, I, I especially highlighted Ibn you know, and uh, after Ibn Muqaffa, we also see Jahil in third century. He was also uh, patronized by this scholar and he, he did a good job. And uh, Ibn Muqaffa was very young when he died. I think he was 35 or 36 when he was assassinated by, uh, uh, because, uh, uh, yeah, there was a, a political problem for the frame. Him, which led to his murder as assassination, he could contribute a lot. And Al Jahid, he, he lived long and contributed well. And his uh, and later we see Masoudi, very famous uh, Shia historian, uh, the author of Murud. Uh, he also was Asfahani, the very famous scholar who compiled a book Al Aghani. Uh, he was also patronized. So I mentioned all these names uh, because they were not religious scholar. Uh, they worked on fine arts and uh, uh, and and tried to contribute uh, uh, the previous nation's work and their contribution to to literary works, just like philosophy and others. They translated uh, or they tried to to convert their work into the Arabic uh, uh, Arabic or Muslim work. So it's Fahani, uh, his book Ani. The, the songs and the, and their style and tunes and 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 uh, the protocols in this regard, but he still life of third and fourth century from Medina and other parts of the Muslim world. Anyway, he was not a religious scholar, but he was patronized by ulama and uh, he did a good job. So. Uh, in this part, before Madrasa, we don't see any uh, state regulated authority or institution, but we see
Dr. Abdusmad, are you there? We can't hear your voice. Dr. Abdusmad, are you there? Uh, I apologize, everyone. I think uh, we are having some electricity uh, issues in our city. So the internet is very unstable. So let's see if we can uh, get him back. Yeah, we, we uh, understand that the voice quality is not very good. Um, yeah, Dr. Dasamad, is it possible for you to switch to Wi-Fi? I mean, uh, if the electricity has come back, uh, because uh, we are having trouble. Oh, yeah, 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 that's true. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm on Wi-Fi. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think, yeah, it will not continue long. Yeah, now I'm switched to Wi-Fi. All right. Please share your screen and uh, continue. I think we lost him again. Just bear with us while we try to get him back. Uh, Dr. Dusumat, we had lost you again. Is it um, okay now on your side? You are on mute. Dr. Abdusamaz, you are on mute. I'm sorry. Yeah, can you hear me now? Yes. Oh, that's great. Okay, uh, 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 can someone uh, tell me where did we break? Because I didn't know and I got disconnected. Patronage of uh, scholars. Okay, that's great. Here we go. Yeah. Okay. So uh, yeah, we were here on second uh, 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 second subslide, religious and secular sciences. So the Muslim emperors uh, before the establishment of Madrasa, they did not patronize on the religious sciences, but they also patronized secular sciences, as we see. In, the middle of third century, uh, uh, they were, uh, uh, the, the, we can say they were poor Murtazil and uh, Imam Ahmed was not feeling good when he was tortured by, by uh, al Ma'mun and, 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 and people uh, 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 and other people from Abbasid uh, uh, block, government block. So anyway, uh, the third century was, uh, 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 was uh, uh, very, uh, uh, we, we, can, we can say, very clear in this regard that uh, the caliph at the time they were pro-Mu'tazilite and they were supporting them and 
they were not happy with Sunni scholar. And that's why we see the Bayt al-Hikmah uh, 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 was working at the time on secular sciences. And uh, they were trying to, to, to translate all work which has been done by, uh, uh, by ancient civilization or ancient nations, uh, Greek, whether Greek or Hindus or someone else. So it was the emergence of secular sciences as well. Anyway, the third one subslide is, is there. Masjid, Baghdad, and Halafa. Before the Madrasa, there were three kinds of institution. I, I wouldn't say institution. Yeah, they were imparting education on 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 uh, on uh, as per their capability or capacity. Uh, Masjid, yeah, it was main source since time of Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam from Sahaba Tabi'in, and Masjid was main central part of imparting education. Maktab was there, and sometime Maktab they were associated with mosque, and most of, uh, and sometime they were uh, 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 the drawing rooms of ulama, and pupils used to get together there and learn from their shiuch and mashayikh. And halakat, halakas was there uh, also, uh, uh, and they were not restricted or confined to the mosque or to the drawing rooms. Sometime these kind of halakat they were at mosque, sometime at drawing rooms. And sometimes it's central place of metropolitan, uh, I mean, big cities of the Muslim empire, just like in Baghdad or Umayyad or, or, or Dimashq or somewhere else in Kufa and Basra. So these halakas, they were very prominent. And they were not, uh, uh, I would say again, they were not confined to the uh, masajid. Uh, yes. Uh, the first madrasa uh, in the history of uh, 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 Muslims, uh, which was established earlier, it was Madrasa Nidamiya, Nidamiya of Baghdad. We will see a lot of uh, articles and uh, dissertations and books have appeared so far uh, on this aspect, Nidamiya of Baghdad. Uh, but, but this is very important to know. Uh, uh, there were a uh, uh, lot of factors which caused to establish uh, Nidami of Baghdad. And uh, uh, in fact, it was established in 1066, 1066, in second half of 11th century. And uh, the person who was behind the establishment of Nidamiya, who was uh, Nidam al Tusi, very famous, Saljuk Wazir at that time. And uh, he worked hard on the establishment of this madrasa and spent a lot of money and uh, invited a lot of scholars to come to this madrasa and participate and impart their expertise and uh, uh, their knowledge. And one of them was Imam Ghazali. Imam Ghazali also uh, 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 came to the and I think it was uh, around uh, 480, between 480 and 490 uh, from Hijra. Uh, uh, Imam Ghazali was there, and Abu Ishaq Shirazi was uh, uh, the southern mudaris of that time. And uh, initially, he refused to be southern mudaris, the chief teacher, or uh, we can say the vice chancellor of Nadami of Baghdad, but, uh, but later he agreed upon. And meanwhile, another person, Ibn, Ibn Sabbaq, who was appointed as the teacher. Uh, we should know that Madrasa Nadami, when was established, and before Nidamiya, there were some institution uh, in, in in Muslim world. Although the, 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 they were no, they were not known as madrasa, but they were there. Just like Jamiat al Azhar, it was established by uh, Buwahid in 10th century in, in Egypt, and they also established uh, 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 Darul Hikmah, just like Bayt al Hikmah, uh, which was established by Mansur and later uh, Abbasid Caliph. They also established in 10th century an institution uh, named Dar al-Hikmah. So before Nidami of Baghdad, uh, uh, not too much earlier, but uh, maybe 50 or 60 years earlier, they also established. And Sal when Saljuk came to the government and they were a uh, successor of uh, Buwahid and Fatmi, we see the, uh, the change, uh, political changes which occurred in 5th century or uh, late 4th century of Hijra. So they worked on that pattern and they realized that establishment of uh, institution of learning, this is very important to change the mindset of general public. That's why they tried to establish Nidami of Baghdad. And that's why when you see the Western contribution uh, uh, from the 20th century onward uh, till now, you will see they associate Nidami of Baghdad with certain political and and, and certain political and uh, theological doctrines. Uh, they can find, they, they associate Nidami with it. Just like Gold Zihar uh, in his book, Introduction to Islam, he has talked about it. 
and he said that Nizamiya was established just to promote uh, Ashi'arism against the Mu'tazilism. And some people said that Nizamiya was established just to counter uh, 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 sh uh, Shi'ism with, with Sunnism uh, and uh, we can say the Shafi'ism uh, pr prominently because a lot of the ulama, they were leading this movement. They were Shafi'i, just like Abu Ishaq al-Shirazi and Abu Ma'ali al juaini and Imam Ghazali. All of them, they were Shafi'i scholar. So they were leading this uh, institution and uh, it was against Shi'ism because they were prominent uh, earlier 50 or 60 years in this uh, uh, in this region. So uh, that's why they were trying to counter Shi'ism. So I think uh, uh, it's not fair to uh, associate Nidamiya with the promotion of, uh, of the only promotion of these two, 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 two thoughts. I, I mean, Shi'ism or Shafi'ism, this is not fair. There were other factors as well. So uh, uh, there were other fa factors as well. And uh, because Nidami of Baghdad was not transmitting only Ilm uh, al-Kalam and other religious sciences, but they were also uh, trying to, uh, to, 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 to make learn some administrative sciences and some linguistic sciences uh, uh, just to get some uh, government employees, uh, bureaucrats and clerks for, for, the, for the running of government system. That was uh, uh, the main aim of uh, uh, Nidam al-Mulk Tusi. So, yeah, this is true. They were promoting Ashariism and Shafiism and other thoughts, but it was not only the main purpose or uh, 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 the main goal of uh, Salju government to, to just only promote. Because we see uh, there were some Shafi'i scholars, they were biased towards Shafiism and against uh, Hanbaliism, and there were some disputes against Hanabla and Shafi'i uh, in fifth century of Baghdad as highlighted by a, by a very famous scholar, George Magdasi, in, in his very prominent article, uh, uh, The Muslim Institution in the 11th Century of Baghdad. He also highlighted, but Nidam al wrote a lot of letters, not only to Shirazi and other scholars, that we don't want to promote one sect or one school of thought from uh, all Islamic, uh, uh, Islamic school of thought, just like Han Hanbali and Ad Maliki and Hanafi. We should be uh, uh, we, we should be moderate in this regard. We should be just to everyone, and we have to incorporate all segments of the society and all the scholar. So they were not biased for the Shafi'ism or Ashi'arism, but in fact, uh, uh, the ruling uh, the the prominent ulama of that time they were Shafi'i at the time. So that's why they were leading this institution. So it was uh, uh, it was named with the tendency of Ashi'arism or, or or the Shafi'ism. So that was the brief background of Nidami of Baghdad. Anyway, uh, uh, curriculum and autonomy, yeah, this is true, uh, uh, that uh, Nidami of Baghdad has a full autonomy and there was no interference from Nidam al-Mulk Tusi and others. But this is true that Nidam al-Mulk uh, 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 took everything in his hand from the appointment of teacher and Southern Mudaris and I mean the chief uh, teacher of, of the institution. And he never allowed person who was not Shafi'i, uh, who was Hamli or Shi'i, especially the Shi'i. There were some Hamli scholars, Hanafi scholars, but uh, uh, they were allowed, but Shi'i, they never allowed to, to get teacher in, in Nidami of Baghdad. And uh, Nidam al-Multusi was very strict in this regard. So the autonomy, I think, uh, autonomy was in terms of uh, curriculum and what every teacher intended to teach his people or his strengths. He was autonomous in this regard. He has freedom and no intervention from the government. But uh, but the appointment of teachers, it was not at the hand of uh, the Sadr Mudaris or the chief teacher of that time. Uh, it was at the hand of uh, Nidam Multusi and his family. Anyway, the fourth one, Nidamiya's impact on learning tradition. Yeah, this is true. Nidamiya played a pivotal role to promote learning. As I say, Nidamiya was an advanced form of learning institution because before Nidamiya, you will see a lot of madrasa. Even in Baghdad, there were around 30 madrasa, as, uh, as mentioned by George Magdasi in his article. And when George Magdasi uh, uh, came to mention uh, uh, Nidami of Baghdad in his very famous book, The Rise of Colleges in, in uh, the Learning of Institution in Western uh, and Islam, so uh, he also highlighted that there were a lot of institutions before the establishment of uh, Nidami of Baghdad, but, uh, but they were based on one teacher. Uh, just like Abu Ishaq Shirazi was teaching fiqh and ilm al-kalam, 
So his institution was named the Madrasa of Abu Ishaq al-Shirazi. And before Madrasa of Abu Ishaq al-Shirazi, if you go to the Nishapur, and there was a very famous Usuli jurist, uh, 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 very famous scholar, Abu Ishaq al-Faraini, there was Madrasa of Abu Ishaq al-Faraini, and Madrasa al-Bayhaq is what very prominent in, in, in fifth century, but it was based on Imam Bayhaqi, the very famous muhaddis in fifth century who died in 458. So there were a lot of madrasa, but they were not mothers in terms of, uh, uh, of, uh, of uh, just like uh, the modern term, that there are a lot of scholars, a lot of disciplines, a lot of courses, they are being taught under one roof and under one uh, 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 unified system. It was not there, uh, but a lot of scholars, they were teaching in different halakas, uh, uh, their sciences, their expertise, they were imparting. So yeah, uh, they used to be called and named madrasa as well, but it was not like Nidham of Baghdad. Anyway, if someone wants to, to learn uh, more about uh, Nidham of Baghdad, there are a lot of books and uh, 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 in question answer session, if someone poses this kind of question, I, I can respond to it. And the uh, book of Umir Safi, The Politics of Knowledge and uh, uh, Wail Halaq, article, state education and uh, jurist and uh, uh, political thought of uh, Abu Ali al-Juni. It's very really good. Uh, and so we will talk later if we uh, if we get time on Ghazali's rule and Abu Ali al-Juni's rule in Nidamiya. So anyway, this is the brief uh, 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 about Nidamiya. Uh, let's come to the madrasa in, in medieval South Asia. Uh, when we talk about madrasa in medieval South Asia, here. So we don't see any madrasa uh, 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 before Nidamiya in South Asia. And in fact, the first madrasa which was established in medieval South Asia, it was the madrasa was established by Shehabuddin Ghori at Ajmer in 1190. And before 1190, they were not, uh, they were not uh, a formal madrasa, but they were makatib in halakat. Uh, yeah, in previous talk, I missed a very important point uh, that uh, Nidami, when Nidami of Baghdad was established, so there were no learning institution in West. And uh, George Mughdis, he has has come to a very good conclusion in this regard. He says that uh, uh, Kaza, the Waqf, uh, Waqf pattern, which was introduced by Western, uh, 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 Western academic uh, learning institution, it came from the concept of Waqf. Because when Nidami of Baghdad was established, it was endowed by government some endowments, some 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 lands and some some properties which will contribute to 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 meet the expenses of Nidami of Baghdad, and it will cause for this madrasa to be more sustainable in future. And it 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 will not be uh, 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 what we can say. It will not be uh, uh, it will not be dependent on the rulers. If they want to continue it, they will continue. Otherwise, they will stop it. No. It was autonomous in this regard, and it has his, his, his own sources of income, just like Waqf. So when the first University of uh, West was established in Spain, I do remember, I think in 12th century, so they also copied the model of Nidami of Baghdad. And I'm not saying this, uh, but it was said by George Mughdisi in his famous book, The Rise of Colleges. So later we can discuss it further if we get some, if get some question in this regard. So anyway, I was talking about mothers in medieval South Asia. So before Nidami of Baghdad, there were halakas, and uh, uh, yes, this is true. Ali Hajwiri was there in 10th century. Mu'inuddin Chishti was there, and uh, other scholars, they were there. They were imparting education before the formal madras of Ajmer. Uh, uh, not Mu'inuddin Chishti, Ali Hajwiri, we can say in Lahore, and other scholars in Sindh, uh, and Sindh was a very big area, uh, uh, beginning from Gujarat, Sint, uh, uh, the modern Sint, and, and the Multan. Multan was, was also considered part of Sint at that time. So, yeah, uh, there were Masajid, there were Halaqa, there were Makati, but there were, there were Rasa. Uh, first Madrasa was established by uh, Shahabuddin Ghori in 1190. And, uh, 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 yeah, they were uh, just like uh, in other Muslim, uh, other parts of Muslim empire, they were scholars, they were imparting education, they were makatib, halaqa, but they were not uh, uh, madrasa. Uh, so when we see 
uh, the learning tradition in South Asia, especially the medieval, medieval time, uh, we see the Sindh area, uh, Multan, Sciences, just like uh, uh, philosophy, and 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 uh, 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 reality. You can say mathematics and geography and 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 astronomy and other sciences. They were and music. Uh, they were not there. And all these sciences, they come. They came from Central Asia. They came from Central Asia. So uh, uh, there is. Uh, I apologize. I think we have lost him again. Let's wait if he comes back. Uh, sorry for this. Yeah. Yeah, we can hear you. Please go ahead. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. Uh, yes, we were talking about uh, uh, the mother in, uh, in South Asia in medieval time. So I was talking that there is the difference, key difference between mother in, 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 in northern part of South Asia, I mean, uh, Delhi and other uh, areas of of, uh, of the South Asia and and the Sindh and uh, and uh, then uh, the nearest point of of this region, just like Multan was, as I said, considered uh, the part of Sindh earlier in in twelfth and thirteenth century. Uh, so uh, in Sindh and other part, just like Gujarat and Multan, they were prominent in religious or we can say Mankulat, uh, the transmitted sciences. But Delhi and these uh, uh, northern part of South Asia, they were prominent in, in Ma'akulat. And Ma'akulat came from Central Asia. And there was a dispute between uh, the Indian scholar that whether we should incorporate Ma'akulat, rational sciences in curriculum of Madras or not. So it was, it continued till 14th century. And at the time of Alauddin, it was, uh, if you see the history of uh, Biaudin Barani, Tariq Feroz Shahi, we see the dispute between ulama, uh, between different par, uh, groups of ulama, that uh, whether we should incorporate rational sciences in, in the curriculum of madras or not. So most of the ulama at that time agreed upon incorporation of uh, rational sciences in, in, in the curriculum of madrasa. So that was very uh, uh, drastic change in the history of learning tradition in South Asia. So uh, uh, in South Asia, we see two historic uh, uh, main events. This is very unfortunate. Uh, I don't know what's going on here. Uh, I think, uh, you can switch off your video. Maybe that will solve things. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, we can see that. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah. yeah. So I, I was saying that there were two historic moments. Uh, they, they played a pivotal role in, in the history of uh, learning tradition in South Asia. The first was uh, the 1153 when, uh, when Ghazna was seized by a girl's truck, uh, uh, a Turk uh, in uh, 1115, uh, 1153. And uh, a lot of scholars from Ghazna, they migrated to Lahore. And Lahore was the main, uh, uh, main hub of learning in, 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 in Ghaznavi. Empire in, in 12th century. So that was a, a big movement for the South Asian learning tradition. And the second one was uh, uh, around 1258 when Mongol 
they conquered a lot of and uh, they attacked a lot of uh, parts of Muslim world, Baghdad and, and Iran and some part of Central Asia. So a lot of scholars from these parts migrated to Delhi. So Delhi emerged as, as, as the hub of learning at that time in, in, in 13th century. So as I said, the first madras in Ajmer was established by Shahabuddin Ghori in 1190. Later, we see a lot of madrasas uh, appeared in South Asia, just like Madrasa Muziya and Madrasa Nasiriya and, 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 and other madrasas. And Madrasa Hoze Khas, Khas uh, uh, it was very prominent also. And uh, if, you, if you see the history of uh, uh, madaris in, in subcontinent, you will see all these uh, madrasa. They were prominent at the time and they are uh, in this regard. Uh, so origin of Madras in South Asia, uh, as I said earlier, it was in the late 12th century. Nidami and South Asian Madrasa. Uh, I think uh, uh, Nidami uh, influenced the, uh, the South Asian Madrasa in terms of uh, 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 structure and in terms of, uh, uh, in terms of uh, somehow we can say, uh, 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 there should be a formal institution, uh, uh, unified system of uh, under the patronage of government. Uh, there, a lot of scholars should participate, uh, impart their uh, their expertise, their sciences. Uh, 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 it should be there. So Nizami influenced the South Asian madras in this regard. But if you talk about curriculum, so I, I, I won't think so uh, that the Nizamiya played a role uh, to influence the South Asian Madrasa because Nizamiya was uh, 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 based on Shafi'i and Shafi'ism and Ashari'ism. And the South Asian Madrasa, which was influenced by Central Asian scholars, uh, most of them, they were Matridi and they were Hanafites. So that uh, they influenced South Asian Madrasa. And the curriculum, if you see, uh, uh, the South Asian curriculum, it was based on Manqulat and Maqulat till 14th century. And after 14th century, uh, I think there was no enough portion of Maqulat in South Asian Madrasa. Uh, 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 sorry, uh, enough portion of Manqulat, transmitted sciences, they based mainly on, 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 on Maqulat, rational sciences from them. So it was a turning point, and 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 all madrasa they were convert, converted into maqulat institution, not the banqulat one. And uh, I think this is the min misconception that these madrasa they were imparting uh, Quran, Hadith, and Fiqh. They were not imparting, uh, imparting in fact, these uh, transmitted sciences. Uh, they were teaching maqulat most of the time. Only few books were there from uh, manqulat. I will come later to this aspect. So uh, Nidami of Baghdad did not influence on South Asia from, uh, uh, from uh, the point of view of Ikula, uh, the teaching content of uh, the South Asian Madrasa. Yeah, it, 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 it influenced on, on, on the main structure of Madrasa. How should it be? only by uh, emperors, but by some philanthropists at the time, they were patronized just like Nidamiya and, and, and uh, uh, state also patronized uh, and uh, 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 donated some endowments for Madrasa. So that was the common thing between Madrasa of Nidamiya and Madrasa of uh, South Asia. And there were some uh, difference, just like uh, South Asian Madrasa, it was based on Hanafite uh, thought, and they, they were imparting rational sciences from 14th century. And they were taqlid, uh, uh, they were, uh, 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 I would say they were firm to, in, 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 in extreme form of taqlid. And they were very rigid in this regard and they never tolerated, uh, yeah, they tolerated Shia and other scholars, but a person could do some kind of talfiq uh, to combine between Hanafi, Hanafite and Shafi'i Shafi and uh, are, are the two school of law from uh, Muslim jurisprudence. Uh, they never uh, uh, tolerated it, 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 it at all. So this is the difference. Uh, uh, let's come to the mother of early modern period. Uh, there was a point, I missed it in the uh, in last. Uh, 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 slide. Madrasa and Khan. Yeah, this is very important to note uh, that 
Before establishment of Madrasa, the Khanqa also played a pivotal role in South Asia, just like the Khanqa of Ali Hajbari, as I said, in 10th century, uh, uh, sorry, yeah, uh, 11th century. And Ali Hajbari, we know he came from Ghazni. He, uh, he came from Ghazni and died in Lahore in 1072, and he imparted education at his Khanqa. And also Khaja Muhinduddin Chishmiri, uh, uh, Chishti, he also imparted education at Ajmer, but Ajmer Madrasa was established uh, uh, before him. And Bahuddin Zakari also uh, imparted education in Multan and uh, at his Khanqa. Uh, Nidamuddin 18th century, he also imparted education at his Khanqa. So the Sufia, they also play their role in Khanqa. And uh, if you see the Arabic literature, uh, just like uh, Subul Aash and other books, uh, uh, you will see they, 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 they use the term of ribat. Ribat was named uh, for the Khanqa in Arabic literature. Uh, if you see the Shahabuddin al Umri, uh, the author of book Masalik al Absar, Fima Malik al Absar, and uh, Subul Asha, and other writer, and just like Ibn al Jozi, who also talked about in Al Muntadam uh, and Sayyid al Khatr and other books about the Madrasa uh, when he comes to mention a scholar from South or somewhere else, or he migrated to South Asia to impart education. So he also mentioned that they were synonyms of Khanqa in Arabic language. So Khanqa also played uh, import, an important role in this regard. As I said, uh, the learning tradition was in transition between Manqulat and Ma'qulat. Uh, from 12th century to 14th 14th century, ulama were discussing, and there was dispute between whether ma'aplat should be incorporated in madrasa curriculum or curriculum or not. So, but in incorporating rational sciences in, in, in madrasa curriculum, and Saaduddin Muntaqi, he is very famous in this regard. If you see his his uh, his his part of his rule in this regard, especially in Tariq Firushia, you will see that he was very. Uh, 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 he was playing an important role in this regard. That's why he was uh, he was said Saduddin uh, al because he was promoting uh, rational sciences. Uh, yes, let's come to the early modern period. I mean, 15th and 16th century. Uh, yeah. In 16th century, the government officially invited a lot of ulama uh, to Delhi. Uh, so uh, they they came to Delhi and 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 participate and, and participated in culture and learning culture of Delhi. Uh, I could remember in this regard that uh, that Rafiuddin Safavi Shirazi, very famous muhaddis of that time, and he was the disciple of Abdurrahman al-Sakhawi, very famous muhaddis. And, uh, and Sakhawi was the student of Ibn Hajar, Ibn Hajar was the student of Iraqi. So that was the tradition, uh, traditional scholar of Hadith at that time. And uh, muhaddis uh, Rafi'uddin came to Delhi and, and imparted Hadith sciences. And two scholars from Multan, I mean Sindh, uh, uh, because Sindh was the part of, uh, uh, Multan was the part of Sindh, Two brothers, uh, Sheikh Azizullah and Sheikh Abdullah Tulambi, they also came to Delhi and imparted education. And Mir Fatullah Shirazi was uh, uh, was invited by Akbar to come to Delhi and uh, and and bring some sort of reforms in in the curriculum of Madrasa. So the, he was also invited and he uh, imparted uh, played a very important role in this regard. I will come to to elaborate further his role in this regard. Uh, Yes, inclusion of letters, uh, advanced ma'akula books in the curriculum. Yeah, this is true uh, that uh, before Mir Fatullah Shirazi, and if you see this exactly the span of time of uh, Mir Fatullah Shirazi, he was in 16th century at the time of Akbar. Uh, he came to Delhi and he was appointed Sadr Sudur. Uh, we can say somehow chief justice or the chief scholar of uh, Akbar time, and he was a Shi'i scholar, and he was the student of Mir Ghiyasuddin. So before Mir Fatullah Shirazi, a lot of books were there, just like Matali al-Anwar was there, Mawaqif uh, Qadi Abduddin Iji was there, Miftah Ulum Sikaki was there. These books of rational sciences or the linguistic sciences or the theology, they were there, used to be taught in Madrasa. But... Uh, uh, me Fatullah Shirazi introduced some books of uh, 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 Mullah Dawani and, uh, and Mullah uh, Sadruddin Shirazi, uh, uh, known as Mullah Sadra and other scholars. 
and uh, Mir Sayyid Sharif Jurjani, also uh, the grandson of Sharif Jurjani, he also came to India and and uh, uh, and uh, imparted his expertise in 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 rational sciences, especially the Ilm al-Kalam theology. So all these scholars they came to uh, Delhi and and uh, and uh, imparted secular subjects and and different books on 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 rational sciences. Uh, yeah. The rule of Mir Fatullah Shirazi is very clear in this regard because he was the person who introduced a uh, uh, lot of subjects. Uh, they were not part of uh, curriculum in Madrasa, just like mathematics, measurement, medicine, philosophy, history, ethics, Arabic, Persian, Sanskrit. Uh, uh, all these were introduced by Mir Fatullah Shirazi. And there are a lot of works. I can refer to them if someone has a in this regard. So Mir Fatullah was a key figure in this regard, and he was the Shia Sadhu Sudu, and he was, I think, the first chief scholar of, of Mughal Empire who was not Hanafi, who was Shia. And not only Sadhu Sudu, Uh, yes, sorry. Yes, please go anyway, ahead. Yes, sorry for interruption and uh, it's... <laughs> uh, next time I will suggest that 11 o'clock, I think this is not the suitable time in Islamabad, I think. Because uh, if, uh, yeah, uh, I because this week I... I think uh, that was not the schedule of electricity at 11 o'clock, but uh, anyway, it's very unfortunate. So Mir, we were talking about Mir Fatullah Shirazi, uh, who was uh, a very prominent scholar, uh, Shirid Irani uh, uh, scholar, came to Delhi and, and brought some uh, drastic changes in the curriculum of Madrasa at that time. And uh, since then, we see the Ma'kula, they were, uh, 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 they were, uh, uh, they were the main part of uh, Madrasa curriculum in South Asia. And uh, if we want to see uh, the transmitted sciences in uh, Madrasa curriculum in South Asia, we see, uh, uh, I think, in Tafsir only Baydavi was there, and Tafsir Jalalain was there, some part of Tafsir uh, Baydavi and some part of Jalalain was there. And from Hadith, there was only one book, Mashariq al Anwar, the Sagan, uh, authored by Sagan. Uh, they were no enough, uh, 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 there were not enough books in Hadith and Tafsir. So I think this is uh, uh, this is somehow misconception about South Asian Madrasa that they were uh, imparting uh, transmitted sciences, especially after 14th century. I think it was not there. Uh, yes, uh, ulama's uh, representation in every aspect of life, yeah, yeah. Uh, in scientific field and applied sciences, ulama were uh, uh, excellent in, in these in these regards. And uh, uh, I mean, uh, the main scholar of uh, geometry and mathematics, they, they were uh, Muslim scholars. Uh, I think they were the graduate of Madrasa and uh, and other disciplines, just like they, uh, uh, because there were a lot of hukama, uh, they were all of so, uh, graduates of Madrasa uh, and, and, and other people, uh, uh, the big bureaucrats of, of the government uh, at the time, they were the graduates of Madrasa. But the uh, concept of Madrasa differed from the modern Madrasa. Uh, this is true. Uh, ideal religious harmony, yeah. In 16th century, uh, uh, there was ideal religious harmony. Money uh, between Sunni and Shi'i, and uh, between Muslim and non-Muslim, uh, especially the Muslim and between Muslims and Hindus at the time of Akbar. Uh, as I mentioned, that uh, Mir Fatullah Shirazi was appointed Sadr Sudur or the chief scholar of. of Uh, 
Uh, yeah, in this regard, uh, I want to highlight that some people say that uh, 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 Hadith sciences, they were also uh, doing a good job in subcontinent. Uh, they some most of them they refer to Abdul Haq Mahdi's Delhi. I think this is to note that uh, every scholar who emerged in Hadith sciences uh, in subcontinent or South Asia, uh, I think they got their Hadith studies from Hijazi ulama. Uh, yeah, uh, they got their uh, uh, shuyuh from Hijaz, uh, uh, just like Abdul Haq Mahdi's Delhi, he went to Hijaz and studied Hadith from uh, uh, scholars from uh, uh, Hijaz. And uh, in his time, at his time, he also went to, to uh, uh, Hijaz and studied Hadith from uh, 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 Hijazi scholars. Yeah, and and one of them, Uh, I don't know. The problem is from me or somewhere else? I think it's uh, the internet connection at your place, I think. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah sometimes it just appeared that my connection is unstable, but I don't know exactly. Uh, yeah, because when I go to browsing, so it works well, even on my data. Uh, is, is someone using uh, it? Uh, anyway, I'm so sorry. Yeah, this is very for And I think uh, if you allow me, we can wait for more minutes because uh, after 12, there will be Wi-Fi. So I think we can go smoothly or we should begin. I think we should continue as much as we can because uh, 12 30, we have to close this session. Uh, oh, oh. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's true. Anyway, uh, I was talking about that uh, they were uh, they were uh, prospering in in 16th century in uh, subcontinent as well. So I was saying that uh, every scholar who appeared in Hadith sciences, I think he went to Hijaz and brought some some Hadith uh, 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 some uh, uh, what, what what can I say? Uh, he studied hadith in Hijaz and and brought back hadith uh, 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 had, uh, had hadith studies culture in Syria and started to impart it. Whether it's it it is Abdul Haq Dehlvi or Muhammad bin Tahir Patni from Gujarat or or other scholar, even Shah Walula uh, before to go Hijaz, he was not uh, doing a good job in hadith studies. Men came back from of uh, uh, commentaries on Watta and and, uh, and brought some uh, changes in the of Qadr Sarahimi and started to introduce uh, Hadith sciences uh, at his Qadr in in, 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 in in subcontinent and, uh, before Shia Abdul Aziz or, uh, or Shia Wadullah Dehl. Every scholar appeared in Hadith. He went to Hijaz and came and brought back uh, from their hadith studies and uh, started promoting in South Asia. So, but it, it couldn't continue because if you see the his, uh, uh, Shah Walula Rahim, uh, Shah Abdullah Dalvi, uh, the latter historian, just like uh, 
if you see the book of Ghulam Ali Azad Bilgram, Imas Al Karam, he has mentioned. Uh, I'm so sorry for this interruption. So uh, I was saying that uh, Hadith was, was not the part of uh, Madrasa curriculum in South Asia uh, from 14th century. Yeah, let's come to the uh, 18th century and uh, 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 18th century is, uh, is very important. Uh, in this regard, because uh, there were four institutions, they were established in 18th century, and they played a, a big role in, in, in forming of modern madrasa. Uh, I, I think there were four institutions, the Farangi Mahal, very famous, and Madrasa Rahimiya, which was established by Shah Waliullah, and Calcutta Madrasa, which was established by Warren Hastings, and the De Delhi College, uh, uh, it was established by the British colonist uh, colonial government uh, uh, for, for the Muslims, uh, just like Fort William College for Oriental Languages in India. So let's talk about Frangi Mahal. Uh, Frangi Mahal tradition, uh, it was influenced by, by uh, can you hear me? Uh, yes, please go ahead. We can hear you. Uh, that's great. Thank you. So Frangi Mahal, it was actually influenced by uh, 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 by the tradition which was established by Mir Fatullah Shirazi, because uh, the person who was behind uh, the Ferengi Mahal, we, we see uh, uh, Mullah Qutbuddin. So Mullah Qutbuddin was the disciple of Abdul Salam of 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 of, of uh, Diwa, and Abdul Salam of Diwa was the disciple of uh, uh, Abdul Salam uh, Lahori, and Abdul Salam Lahori was the student of Mir Fatullah Shirazi. So actually, the tradition of Mir Fatullah Shirazi. Came to to Frangi Mahal and 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 there were four sons of Mullah Qutbuddin. They were given a land uh, land by Aurangzeb, uh, especially the Mullah Said who was participating in 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 in, in Fatawa Alamgiri. They were given this uh, this Mahal uh, 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 this castle uh, which was used by uh, by a, by an English trader and it was given to them. And after the assassination of Mullah Qutbuddin, so they established. Their madrasa there, and and uh, one of uh, his sons, uh, Mullah Nizamuddin Sihalvi, he appeared as uh, he appeared as a, as a great scholar of 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 traditional regional sciences of South Asia, uh, and uh, he 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 designed a curriculum which was named later Nizami curriculum. So Nizamuddin Sihalvi was behind this uh, tradition of Darsi Nizami, which is going on right now in in Pakistan. So the, uh, this is uh, this is very important in, in this regard. The tradition of Frangi Mahal. Uh, yeah, this is true uh, that uh, uh, Deoband uh, was influenced by Madrasa Rahimiya, as people uh, say, just like uh, Ibrahim Musa and others. 
but but most of the uh, uh, books which are introduced in the modern curriculum of the, uh, of all madrasa which is uh, inspired by darul ulum dewan or madahir ul ulum or nadwat ul ulama like now uh, these books were the part of farangi mahal or nizami curriculum so farangi mahal played a, a big role in this regard and even uh, uh, he, he 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 couldn't tell he couldn't have been challenged so far and all these books which we study in madrasa and see in the curriculum of madrasa they came from frangi mahal and uh, frangi mahal uh, we can say uh, it was a main uh, 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 what can i say uh, yeah uh, it was the main player in this regard who played uh, in in forming of a uh, uh, modern madrasa curriculum so farangi mahal history uh, uh, the robinson book is very famous in this regard i think this is not true uh, if we say that uh, farangi mahal was uh, was imparting rational sciences and madrasa rahimiya tried to counter farangi mahal and uh, uh, shaulul rahmatullah alai in his father shab abdul rahim tried to introduce uh, transmitted sciences uh, just like manqulat hadith quran fiqh these kind of things Uh, because if you see uh, uh, the wasiyat nama uh, uh, of shawlul rahmatullah alay with the name of al juzul lati so we we see the all books she wallahi studied at his childhood from his father and other scholar uh, i think all these books were uh, the part of nizami curriculum or the farangi mahal tradition at the time which was introduced earlier by fatullah shirazi so there was no big change and uh, yeah the main curriculum of uh, madrasa rahimiya remain is uh, as farangi mahal curriculum it was not different from that so madrasa rahimiya was established by shah abdul rahim the father of shah wali ullah and came back from hijaz and wrote two commentaries of muta al musaffa wal musawwa and he translated quran karim in persia persian language and, and uh, he tried to to bring some kind of tafsir between different school of thought Uh, whether Hanafi, Shaf, uh, whether Hanafi, Shafi'i, and Malik, and uh, if you see his uh, his wasiyat nama uh, al Juzul Latifi says, Wali Wali Abdul 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 Rahim al Dahlawi maskanan, wal Hanafi yu maslakan, wal wal Shafi'i yu darsan, wal Ashari yu aqidatan. This kind of uh, 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 text we uh, in his uh, uh, writing of his autobiography uh, al juzul latif so he was trying to combine between uh, between uh, different school of thoughts between different school of law especially the hanafi and shafi uh, uh, and uh, they were uh, the main uh, uh, they were causing main problem at that time they were not tolerating each other especially the hanafi they were not tolerating shafi but shah wallah was trying to promote shafi usul of uh, of hadith criticism at that time So Madrasa Rahim was second Madrasa which was established in 18th century by Shah Abdul Rahim and uh, Shah Abdullah introduced Hadith sciences and uh, yeah this is true at the time of Shah Wali Shah Wali Allah it, uh, the Madrasa was uh, was known as the Hanafi Madrasa and uh, the Madrasa of Maqulat and at the time of Shah Wali Allah also known uh, the Madrasa of Maqulat and some lessons of Hadith. from Shah Abdul Allah rahmatullahi alayhi at the time of Shah Abdul Aziz Zahlawi he tried to 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 incorporate some hadith books in curriculum and lot of his scholar even the kharabadi people especially the fadl imam kharabadi and his son uh, the great uh, uh, son uh, uh, fadl haq kharabadi the son of fadl imam kharabadi he also studied hadith from Shah Abdul Aziz Zahlawi and Sadruddin Azurda uh, who was a very uh, 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 big scholar at that time prominent scholar Sadr Sudur at the time he also studied hadith from Shah Abdul Aziz Zahlawi so after Shah Abdul Aziz Zahlawi Shah Ishaq uh, became uh, the successor of Shah Abdul Aziz and after Shah Ishaq migrated to Medina uh, Mecca uh, Mia Nazir Hussain Muhammad Zahlawi became the part of this madrasa and this madrasa changed his uh, direction and he became the madrasa of al hadith and Mia Nazir Hussain Muhammad Zahlawi was very very clear in this regard uh, i won't say some uh, uh, sort of word just like stagnant or uh, uh, rigid he was not but he was very biased uh, towards his uh, profound thinking of hadith ahl hadith and uh, uh, yeah so at the time of shah isaq it was not from the time of mir nazir husain muhammad zelwi the 
the Rasa Rahimiyah became the very famous symbolic institution of Ahlul Hadith in Delhi. And Mir Nazir Hussain Mohdiz Zalwi imparted Hadith uh, teaching there, I think, uh, uh, 60 years because he lived long around 100 years. So it was Madrasa Rahimah. The Calcutta Madrasa, it was very important in 17th century. It was uh, 18th century, sorry. It was established in 1718, uh, 1780, and uh, uh, it was established from the self uh, 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 self money of uh, uh, the very famous India, Warren Hastings, and uh, he was demanded, asked by, by uh, some Muslim community leaders that they need their kids to be uh, 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 to be taught religious sciences. Uh, so he established Madrasa Calcutta. Uh, we, we can see the men on the establishment of establishment of Calcutta Madrasa. Yeah, uh, we see the minutes of this uh, 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 Madrasa uh, very early document in this regard. So we see he uh, to prepare some cadre for the government and they should be loyal civil servants ser servants of the British government. And that was the main purpose of Madrasa uh, Ali al Kalkata uh, or Calcutta Madrasa. Uh, yeah, this is true. Nizamiya curriculum was the part of uh, 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 the curricula of uh, uh, Madrasa Aliyah, especially the rational sciences and hadith and fiqh and uh, tafsir books were not there. And the curriculum of this Madrasa in 1791, and he modified uh, somehow and excluded uh, some existing book, just tafsir by Bavi and Jalalain from the curricula of this Madrasa. And uh, instead of that, he purged on Persian language and Arabic language. An initiative of Arabic language was taken in 1821 in Calcutta Madrasa. And uh, definitely there was resistance from Muslim and they were not try to, to let their children learn English and, and Western sciences. So uh, uh, yeah, this is, that was existing. That was a brief history of uh, Calcutta Madrasa and there were a lot of changes. and. If we want to uh, uh, know something about it, and uh, I think a lot of thesis and dissertation has been written on Madrasa Aliya Calcutta in this regard, and uh, it went through some changes, especially after uh, after 1857, because before 1857, uh, the Calcutta Madrasa was not aff affiliated with Calcutta University, and scholars they were not happy uh, with British government because uh, every institution which was existing in south of India, it was affiliated or associated with Cal with Calcutta University University except Calcutta Madrasa and, and uh, definitely in fact uh, consequenced by the government for the uh, for the government jobs and we see the changes which occurred in 18th uh, uh, in 19th century so uh, in Bangladesh uh, there were Two kind of madrasa. Uh, the first was uh, Madrasa Ali Cal at Calcutta, which was established by the British government, and there were some Qomi madrasas which were established later. I mean, in, in 19, late 19th century after Deoband, uh, they are called uh, till now Kharji madrasa or Qomi madrasa. So there is the difference: the Qomi madrasa and the Madrasa Ali of Calcutta. And uh, the Ali madrasa it was recognized as the Ali. College letter and later it was uh, in 20th century it was recognized by the government as 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 Aliya University in modern Bangladesh. But we don't find any trace of uh, of, of 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 this uh, Calcutta Madrasa in modern south uh, modern southern part of India. Uh, I mean in Calcutta somewhere else because all uh, this university was uh, transferred to to the Bangladesh after 18 after 19 not part of. Uh, uh, 18, uh, uh, incident of, uh, of Pakistan between Eastern and Western part of it. Uh, yeah, uh, Delhi College, this is also very important in 18th century and it was established earlier in 1792. And uh, in 1825, it was converted to Delhi College and before it, it was called Muizi Madrasa. Uh, Muizi Madrasa, it was called in 
1825, it was converted to Delhi College. And uh, yeah, they tried to implement a abridged version of Dars uh, uh, and and uh, the Western model sciences in Delhi College. And we see a uh, lot of uh, scholars of this uh, Delhi College, they were uh, the prominent So Delhi College uh, was very important in this regard because uh, from Delhi College, the British government tried to, to combine between uh, the religious sciences, uh, 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 I mean, uh, the Darsin Adami and the modern Western sciences. And with the establishment of uh, Delhi College, they also established a very famous Delhi Vernacular Society, which translated a lot of books. And if you see the book of uh, Molvi Abdul Haq, the uh, Del Delhi Marhum, uh, Marhum Delhi College, we see uh, uh, the, uh, the index of all these books which were translated from, uh, from English or German or French language to the Urdu language. So this society also played a pivotal role in this regard. And uh, yeah, uh, as I said that uh, this college was established in 1825 and there was a very famous debate uh, which was between the Anglicist and Orientalist, uh, I mean, uh, between Lord Macaulay and H.H. Uh, H. H. Wilson and H.T. Princip. So H.T. Princip and H.H. H. Wilson, they were Orientalists and they were saying that uh, the, the heritage or legacy of South Asia, this is very rich and we have to impart their own heritage and, 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 and legacy to their peoples and their experience. And we should not say that uh, 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 their tradition of learning is nothing and uh, they have not contributed uh, to the world. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, we, we say the very famous thing of Lord Macaulay, he said that the library of a scholar in, in, in Britain is, is more than the whole literature of the Muslim world. So I think uh, uh, there was a, a very famous conversation or discussion between Anglicists and Orientalists and the British government, they were convinced by Lord Macaulay and they tried to Anglicize of, uh, of the curriculum and anglicize of the uh, of the government system and from 1835 uh, we see uh, the lakhiraj or uh, the land free uh, tax free lands they were confiscated by the government and uh, all endowments which were in the hand of ulama or uh, in favor of madrasa they were confiscated by the government and uh, the system was converted from persian to english and uh, and and the fiqh was no more relevant to the court system of the south asia and and, and the curricula became the irrelevant at the time. So all it happened uh, uh, after the establishment of Calcutta Madrasa. And that's why we see uh, in 1840s, uh, there were a lot of changes brought into Calcutta Madrasa when uh, uh, Lois Springer, it was, he was the principal of this college and he played a good role in this regard and he was very sincere. So I think the Calcutta Madrasa was a good effort uh, uh, by the British government but unfortunately, uh, it went uh, wrong uh, because uh, ulama were not the part of these discursive debate uh, uh, in, in bringing some reforms in the curriculum of this Delhi college. So uh, I think it was very important because uh, at the incident of, uh, uh, we, we call it uh, uh, the war freedom or Sepoy, Sepoy mutiny, 1857, uh, Delhi college was ruined uh, by uh, uh, by, by this, uh, by this, uh, this destruction in Delhi, and uh, the maktaba was destroyed, and the principal was uh, murdered. Uh, the British principal and a lot of his scholar and Sadruddin Azurda, he was, uh, uh, he was, uh, he was, uh, 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 what can I say? He was also, uh, uh, yeah, he signed uh, the very famous uh, document against British British government, and Fadli Hakkarabadi was a part of it. So Delhi College couldn't play his role after 1857 at uh, it was playing before. 
and uh, Malik Ram and other writers who wrote and just like uh, Khaja Hassan Nizami and, uh, and Mali Abdullah. If you see their writings, we not only the Sir Sayyid, his book as Bhagavatam, but other writers, they also uh, portray that uh, the Sipoy mutiny, especially the learning, especially for the learning tradition of Muslim, and it 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 impacted badly on Delhi College, and Delhi College couldn't revive uh, after as it 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 was, it was doing its job before, and uh, we see. Uh, uh, yeah, it was reopened, and I think in in, in eighteen sixty three or sixty four, and uh, uh, but it was not playing its role as it was playing before eighteen fifty seven. In in twentieth century, it was uh, uh, named with Zakir Hussain Institute, and there were a lot of changes uh, in the curriculum of uh, Delhi College. Uh, yeah, as I said, with the Delhi College, Delhi Vernacular Society it played a big role, and it translated a lot of books from Western sciences to Urdu. So uh, yeah, this uh, role of Delhi College is very important in the history. Uh, the curriculum of this college was modified in different phases and uh, the book of Marguerite Parnay, Delhi College, and it's, uh, uh, yeah, uh, there, it's a kind of anthology and a lot of articles are there just like Ikram Chuktai and other contributor. Uh, 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 and Ikram highlighted the rule of Alois Singer in Delhi College. Uh, in this anthology by Marguerite Parna. So this is very important. So 18th century was important in this regard because uh, we see these institutions, they were trying to bring some reforms in Madrasa curriculum in South Asia. Farangi Mahal, it was the continuation of long tradition of learning. Uh, Makulat in South Asia, Madrasa Rahimiya, they tried to, to bring some hadith and transmitted sciences, for, especially from the time of Shawalullah and onward. Calcutta, they try to, uh, to bridge between Western and, and, and rational, uh, traditional South Asian sciences. And Delhi College was the main institution of uh, westernized, westernization of, of, of science. So yeah, they translated all these westernized, uh, authored, uh, uh, westernized uh, literature into the Urdu. So yeah, let's come to the modern period of Madarasa. Uh, yeah, Deoband was established in 1866 and uh, Nadat was established in 1898 and Madarasatul Islam and Madarasatul Fala. Uh, I will not talk much about this because this is under writing in my uh, article, which I, I, I'm going to produce for uh, General Education for Muslim Society. Uh, Darul Lum Deoband, it was established in 1866. So this is very important figure, uh, 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 1866, because after Sepoy Mutiny, 1857, uh, Delhi College was closed and it was destroyed and it was reopened in 1864, as I said earlier. So there was no institution for Muslim imparting education. So Ulama decided that we should uh, initiate in this regard and we should open uh, an institution which should be, uh, it should be a, 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 the symbolic institution uh, and, 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 and a model institution for the Muslim and should be imparting the modern and classical sciences of Muslims. But unfortunately, uh, uh, because when Darul Um Deoband was established by Qasim Nanutwi Rahmatullah, it was established for the impart, uh, to impart the modern sciences with the classical sciences. But uh, if you see the, uh, the, the writing of Brennan and Graham, uh, who wrote a much on uh, Darul Um Deoband and modern madrasa, so we see after the death of Qasim Nanuti in 1888, around uh, 1888 or 87 or 86, I, I don't remember exactly, Rashid Ahmad Gangui Rahmatullah took over uh, uh, and he changed uh, the mindset of uh, the room teacher and he brought some changes in the curriculum of Deoban. And, and uh, Qasim Nanuti Rahmatullah was thinking as he was, uh, he got this thinking from his teacher, Murbi Mamluk Ali, who was teaching in Delhi College. Uh, and uh, as I said, Sir Sayyid and Qasim Nanuti, both of them, they were student of Mulu Ali. So Sir Sayyid established Aligarh in 1867 uh, uh, and uh, uh, Aligarh was closed in 1868 and Mulana Qasim Nanuti established Dalun Deoban. So uh, I think uh, both of them, they got this idea from uh, uh, their teacher, Mulu Ali, that uh, Sir Sayyid will be focusing on modern sciences and 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 uh, and Mulvi, uh, Qasim Nanuti Rahmatullah would be uh, focusing on 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 the classical sciences, Islamic sciences. But Qasim Nanuti has a big curiosity in this regard because he wanted to promote 
the language of the time. Because he said, uh, uh, if we see the Savan al Qasmi or the book of Yaqub Nanati, the son of Mulim Mamluk Ali, he was uh, the fellow of Qasim Nanuti during his childhood and his learning time in Delhi. So Qasim, Yaqub Nanuti writes that Qasim Nanuti used to think that we should establish a madrasa which would be comprising on the modern sciences, uh, modern philosophy, and modern language of the time. So the Persian, I think, at that time, it was not the language of the time. It was the language of 18 uh, and, and, and before this century, I, I mean 14, 15, 16, 17, 18th century. So that was the language of that time, not the language of 18, 19th century. And the philosophy which was uh, being taught in Deoban, it was not the philosophy of time. It was the philosophy of uh, 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 philosophy which was uh, which was uh, uh, which was uh, I can say which was uh, contributed by Muslim scholar in 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 eighth ninth and twelfth century and later uh, and it came to the India in fourteenth and fifteenth century. So I think Nanuti didn't want to 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 incorporate these books of philosophy and hikma and mantik in the curriculum of madrasa, but. Uh, uh, but the teacher of Madarasa, uh, uh, because they were the graduates of Farangi Mahal, so they came to the Deoban and became the Mudaris, and uh, they they tried to impart uh, these uh, these books and these sciences. So that was the main difference between uh, the uh, the tradition of learning in South Asia and the modern Dalul. And when we say the modern Madarasa, we always mean uh, by this term uh, uh, the Madarasa which was established after Dalul Deoban. And why we call it modern madrasa? Because uh, before it, we see the curriculum of Darsa Nidam, Nidami curriculum, but it was not framed with the years that every student should complete this curriculum in eight years or six years or nine years. The time limitation was not there. And uh, also, uh, uh, the every year, every student, what should teach from his teacher, it was not there. Uh, and a lot of teachers should sit in one place and there should be some sort of timetable and 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 th there should be exams after one year and after the passing examination the student should be promoted to the next class so this modern concept of learning came first time to the deoban from madrasa it was not even in farangi mahal if you see the farangi mahal was not doing this in 19th century it was later implemented by Molvi Molana Abdulbadi in 20th century in farangi mahal so deoban was the first modern madrasa God, and every madrasa uh, uh, be, uh, came into the existence after uh, Deoban, where the Nadwatul Ulama Isla or Falahi Institute, uh, all they 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 were modeling Deoban. Yeah, somehow they 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 got some difference from it, uh, and they they tried to bring some changes in their curriculum. But unfortunately, till now, the madrasa is uh, imparting the same rational sciences, which are uh, irrelevant to the modern time. So I think if these rational sciences are replaced with the current rational sciences, the current philosophy of time, or the current language of the time, instead of Persian, I think uh, it would be more fruitful and constructive for the modern madrasa. Uh, so I, I think uh, this modernization of madrasa or its concept or uh, the proposed reforms, I think uh, uh, they were proposed by scholars in earlier uh, 20th century. If we read uh, the uh, the books of Munazir Hassan Gilani, not only Hindustan and Muslim Manukar Nizam Italian, but his address in Rampur College, uh, which is uh, uh, published and transcribed in, in the book of Miha Khan Qadri. So we see uh, Munazir Hassan Gilani has a different, uh, 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 different proposal in this regard. Uh, and he was not agreeing with the curriculum of Darul Um Deoban. And if you see the uh, 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 if you see the idea of Zakir Hussain Ramatullah, he has a different idea in this again. Abul Kalam Azad, when he was uh, appointed first education minister of, of India or in 18, in 1948, he has a different idea in this regard. And Hussain Ahmad Madni, he has written Nisabe Madni, which is very famous in this regard. So I think uh, all these scholars, even Vedullah Sindhi, he has some sort of uh, agenda in his mind, uh, how to reform Madrasa curriculum. And Molana Shibli Nomani, he was first uh, uh, companion of Sir Sayyid and later came to Nadwa to the ulama, and he also frustrated from Nadwa to the ulama and left it. So all these is scholars, I think they had some suggestion in this regard, and all of them they agreed that uh, this this rational these rational sciences which are being taught in Madrasa right now, 
I think these are irrelevant and, and, and uh, instead we are uh, in dire need of introduction of Jadid Ilm al Kalam, the new, uh, new theology of, of, uh, of Islam. Uh, so that's what I see. Uh, we should review this curriculum and we should go to the uh, views of uh, our scholar in 20th century and we should bring some, some drastic changes in this regard to, to, to make Madrasa more relevant to the time and serving the need of the society. And uh, uh, not only their graduates uh, 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 playing their role only in religious economy, but they should be part of uh, uh, society and they should be playing their role constructively and, and positively. I think that's all about my presentation, uh, my presentation today. And uh, first, uh, the last one is single national curriculum. Yeah, I, I proposed this research just because I wanted to bring some, some highlights that how the Madrasa curriculum could be the compatible to the single national curriculum and how can we bring some uh, uh, changes according to the proposed transformation of ulama in 20th century. So we, we can convince Madrasa scholars and their custodian that these changes are in favor of Madrasa. So that was the idea of this uh, talk and, and this research. And I'm about to complete my research only the last, uh, uh, I mean, modern Madrasa, uh, Madrasa is left and I'm gonna complete it inshallah in March. So that's uh, 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 all about my presentation today. Uh, yeah, I welcome if uh, uh, you people agree to, to pose some question because a lot of things are uh, left in this presentation because uh, I prepared some, some points and I try to highlight them. So if someone has a question or uh, query in this regard, I will be happy to respond it. Thank you. Jazakumullah khair. Thank you very much. Uh, we apologize to everyone for these uh, frequent uh, disruptions of internet. Um, we are already um, close to our finishing time and uh, it's already 12.30. But let's see if we can have a couple of questions. Uh, one of the questions was posted in the chat by Ms. Sadia Yusuf. Uh, she was asking how Sufism, how Shafism is different from Aisharia. Uh, is, it, is the claim true that it encountered uh, Shiaism? Uh just wait. Uh, I should stop my slides here. Yeah. Uh, it would be good because I want to. Uh, now I'm switched on Wi-Fi, so it would be good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The first question was from. Uh, uh, yeah. Let me see chat. Uh, yeah, can you share? The, the, the question is: Is Shafiism different from Asharia? Uh, is the claim true that in, it encountered Shiaism? Uh, yeah, this is true uh, uh, because if you see. Uh, the, the, the Seljuk government appear, appeared in, 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 uh, in fifth century, uh, or we can say 11th century from the, uh, this calendar. In 11th century, they were, count, they were countering two things. Uh, the first Shiism, and they were uh, uh, countering Shiism with Sunnism, especially the Shafiism, and the Mu'tazilism, the rationalism, thinking with Ashiaism. And we see there are three kinds of uh, 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 monotheistic, uh, we can say approaches in, in Islamic theology. First of all is uh, Mu'tazili, uh, they are called rationalist. And the second one is uh, Maturidi, they try to bridge, bridge between uh, Mu'tazili and, 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 and Ash'ari. And the third one is Ash'ari. So uh, actually, uh, yeah, this is true. All Shafi'i, uh, uh, I would say all Shafi'i, uh, except few exception in this regard, uh, exemption, all Shafi'i, they are Ash'ari. They are Ash'ari. And there was, I think, it was a temporary conflict between, uh, between, 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 uh, I, I would say, uh, that uh, Ash'ari and Hamli at that time, because Ash Hamli, they were more, uh, they were more centric toward the text of Quran and Sunnah, and they were not accepting Ash'ari. But if you compare between Ash'ari and Mu'tazili, you will see the Ash'ari, they are more centric towards text, uh, 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 ex uh, 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 rather, Mu'tazili. So I think, uh, yeah, this is true. Uh, 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 they were trying to uh, counter uh, Shiism with Sunnism, uh, with Shafi'i version, and the Mu'tazili, Mu'tazilite with Ash'arism. So that was the conflict. I think there was no conflict between Hanafi and Shafi'i in, in Baghdad, because if you see all books in this regard, because according to my knowledge, I, I, I would say uh, 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 that according to my knowledge, 
uh, I couldn't see any dispute between Hanafi scholars and, and Shafi'i scholars. Yeah, this dispute appeared in South Asia uh, when Shafi'i tried to uh, explore Shafi'i version of Sunnism. And, and he, 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 he uh, as I said, he writes in his uh, autobiography, the first line of his Juzul uh, Wali Allah bin Abdurrahim Dahlawi, Maskanan, Wal Hanafiyu Maslakan, Wal Shafi'iyu Darsan. So he tried, and Abdulaziz Alwi Rahmatullah, if you see the book of uh, uh, Suraya Dar and, and, and uh, Zia Abdurrahman Hyderabadi and other people who wrote on Shah Abdullah and Naseem Amrohwi, who had uh, done a great job on Shah Abdulaziz Alwi Rahmatullah. Uh, so they have quoted Shah, Shah Abdulaziz Alwi Rahmatullah saying that Hanafi fiqh is good in Qawai Fiqiyah, but Shafi, they are good in Hadith criticism. How to come to new hadith, uh, how to come to differentiate between hadith sahih and hadith bai. So I think uh, the dispute between Shafi'i and Hanafi was not existing there at the time, I think in Baghdad. So uh, enough literature is there. Yeah. Is it clear? Um, Professor Dr. Fakhrul Islam, could you please uh, uh, have your comments? Jazakallah. Assalamu alaikum. Are you hearing me? Wa alaikum assalam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was uh, really a very uh, comprehensive and thought-provoking lecture, and I think the subject is so important. I, I must congratulate the organizers and the presenter, Mr. Abdus Samad Sheikh, for giving such a thought-provoking lecture. Uh, here is a very important thing to be uh, brought into your notice that uh, there is no second opinion about the fact that uh, the system in madrasas should be changed and should be it should be brought at par with the uh, modern uh, trends and requirements but the problem is that uh, uh, the sensitivity comes to the limelight when the government tries to uh, change these uh, uh, madrasas or their curricula um, because there is a sensitivity, as you know, right from the British time till this time that uh, the madrasa people uh, don't accept the interference of the government. So I think if this uh, job is given to the madrasa people and they are, uh, you know, given the opportunity to rethink, to review their curricula and, you know, to, to change their system, I think that would be a, a very durable solution. But if government tries to uh, change it, then, you know, uh, certainly uh, in the post 9-11 era, there has been the sensitivity has been enhanced manifold. So that is the only issue which needs proper attention. I would like to, uh, you know, know about your response to this uh, sensitivity. Thank you. Yeah, this is true. Uh, I think uh, two weeks ago, I, I had a talk with... Uh, yeah, uh, I think, I think there, uh, someone needs to uh, off mic. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, I I had a talk two weeks ago with some scholars and uh, Mufti Takri Usmani, he was there. When I talked about Qasim Nanuti, that he has not this kind of vision to impart this uh, Central Asian uh, philosophy of, uh, of, of curricula in, in modern madrasa, and he tried to bring some modern uh, uh, sciences in the madrasa, uh, combining with classical sciences. And, 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 and he, he, he tried to benefit from uh, Darsan Idami also, but he tried to incorporate English language as the language of the time. And he also tried to bring some, some, some reflection from Western philosophy as he writes some letters. Uh, and you can read this in Sawan Qasmi and other, as I refer to the, uh, the biography of Qas Yaqub Nanuti for the Qasim Nanuti. So Taqi Usmani was, he was very surprised in this regard that, and uh, I got this idea from Brandon and Graham when he said that there was a, a, a very clear confusion between two persons in the history uh, at the time of establishment of Deoban. Between Rashid Ahmad Gangoi, he was more centric towards Sufism and, uh, and, and, and transmitted sciences. And between uh, Qasim Nanuti, he was a very broad-minded and very clear-minded person and scholar. And uh, the, in fact, he was the student of uh, Mamluk Ali. And Mamluk, Mamluk Ali, not influenced on the Qasim Nanuti, also influenced on Sir Sayyid and other people as well. 
So I think, uh, yeah, this is good to know that, uh, 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 yeah, this, there is resistance uh, in Madrasa, especially after 9-11. And uh, uh, everything, we, we call it reforms of Madrasa, they think uh, it's imposed by Western media and the government is, is it's a puppet in their hands. So uh, yeah, this is true, but the unfor this is unfortunate that they're not ready to revisit their thinking. This is very unfortunate. And not only in Pakistan, a lot of the scholar, they're talking about it just like Amar Khan Nasir. He has written a few articles in this regard. Dr. Amin, he has done a good job in this regard. Waris Mazari is there in Delhi, in India. So this is very unfortunate. They're not ready even to read their own scholar in 20th century. Uh, because uh, even uh, if, if you see Shibli, Shibli was not happy with this kind of madrasa. He was not happy with Aligarh uh, uh, and, uh, and uh, Deuban and later with Nadwatul Ulama, he's not happy. And if you see the uh, book of Shibli, Musalmanu Ki Qadim Tali, so he was not westernized, but he was thinking that we should impart something in, uh, uh, in our education, which is based on modern sciences in modern philosophy in modern language. So we are teaching uh, uh, from 50 or 60 books, uh, 15 books in Persian. What will we do with that? Yeah, we should learn Persian because we have a heritage in this language since uh, uh, especially in South Asia since 12th century. Uh, this is good to learn Persia and I'm learning. Uh, uh, and I, I had a few classes session there uh, for Persian learning. But I think to teach your student in Persian language, I think this is not fair. Yeah, Arabic is good, but this is unfortunate. You will see some students from Madrasa. They are more excellent in Persian rather than Arabic. So this is not fair. So uh, yeah, we are doing this job and I'm the graduate of Madras and uh, some Western scholar, they are doing this job. Yeah, they have interest in this regard because uh, in this study, uh, I, I have mentioned that there are around 25 Madras in, in, in Britain and all these Madras are there inspired by whether the room or Madahil room or the uh, very famous Madras of Ahle uh, Jamaat in India. So they want to bring some changes, but they realize uh, that we cannot impose some changes except uh, their mother institution, just like Deoban and Madahilulum and other Darululum, Takis, De, uh, uh, Korangi and uh, Binuria Town. These core madrasa, if they are bringing some changes in their curriculum, yeah, definitely they will impact on Britain Muslim institution madrasa. So the government scholars are working on this. And I'm, I'm on this because I don't think highlights the spring or someone uh, 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 just like Princip or other scholar orientalists they were in fear of favor of oriental sciences I don't want to bring their uh, reflections and highlights on madrasa but I want to elaborate the rule of uh, our scholar just like uh, just like Ubedullah Sindhi and 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 uh, Munazir Hassan Gilani and 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 Abul Kalam Azad and uh, uh, and uh, Zakir Hussain and Hussain Ahmad Madi this kind of scholar I want to highlight their role and what they wanted from madrasa reform. I think this is, should be, so uh, I think there is no study in madrasa in this regard. And every muhtamim is not ready to accept these changes, I think. And if you want to make it relevant, so I think you can see the which, which has been done recently by Jamit Rashid. And the government initiative is good because uh, when we talk about reforms in madrasa, we don't say that uh, computer sciences should be there. These are the second thing, based on transmitted sciences, uh, uh, what we say, religious sciences. I won't say there should be some kind of mix, mixture between or combination between, no. I should not be admitted in madrasa intermediate. Every student should be forced to do intermediate. And after it, he has option whether to go to uh, university for, uh, for, 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 for secular sciences, or he has authority uh, option to go to madrasa. But these kind of, you admit student at the age of just like me, I, I was, I got admission madrasa when I was 11 years old. That was not fair because I, I didn't have the concept of society. What's the sociology? And uh, uh, so uh, I think that's the problem in the madrasa, I think. Uh, but they should impart religious sciences, but on certain level. Not every student uh, who, uh, and there are no, I think, regulatory authority by, from the government on, for the madrasa. So the madrasa should remain, but they should be focusing on religious sciences and there should be a criteria for the induction of the students. I think these reforms 
should be introduced by the government, not to intervene in their territory. Not to intervene. Yeah, uh, I think uh, if you convince Radama that uh, uh, you should bring, you should in incorporate some uh, mo uh, modern subject, just philosophy or story or civics, I think they would be happy to incorporate because these are very good science. They will impact on your thinking better, I think, the critical thinking. So this is good. And if there is one or two courses for English language, I think this is not bad instead of Persian. I think these are good changes to be introduced in Madras. This is my point of view. Okay. Um, so Hale wants to ask a question. This will be our last question. We are already 15 minutes late. So Suhail, could you please go ahead? Assalamu alaikum, everyone. And uh, uh, I appreciate and pray to Allah that may Allah accept all your efforts for mm -hmm. organizing these seminars and others as well. Uh, sir, I have uh, two small questions. One is that uh, uh, how can uh, uh, the society in Pakistan, how can we bridge the gap between the two institutions, reputed institutions? One is the madrasas and others, other are the modern science schools, how can we bridge gap? Because even in today uh, era, there is still a division. And uh, later on, the people who graduate from both the schools, uh, they come into conflict in the society. They don't go in harmony. And the second question is that uh, you mentioned uh, in your presentation that a lot of scholars uh, from South Asia, they went to Saudi Arabia for learning hadith and other uh, alum. So was that the reason uh, of uh, being the introduction of Abdul Wahab or Wahhabi school of thought in South Asia? Thank you. Uh, yeah, good question. Yeah, the bridging gap between uh, modern people and religious people, I think, yeah, just this is because of, uh, as I said, that uh, uh, they're not fully enriched with their uh, I mean, with, uh, yeah, uh, they got some kind of, uh, you know, uh, good knowledge from religious sciences, but they're not aware of modern sciences and the modern psyche of, of knowledge. So I think if we are going to introduce, uh, uh, if we categorize madrasa for higher learning of Islamic studies, so that would be good thing. Because uh, if you see, just like me, uh, I, would, uh, I would say my own example, uh, I got admission madrasa when I was 11 years old and I got, uh, I graduated from there when I was 11, uh, 17 years old. You know, I didn't have a sense of society actually. You know, I read a lot of texts from Quran and Hadith, but I didn't know how to implement them. When I talked to the people about Hadith, I didn't know how to present this Hadith in front of them because Hadith is the text of, is, is the words of the prophet, but it has modern implications implication, just like a uh, lot of things are there from Zakat and other people and Buyul. Uh, I mean, uh, Hadith which, uh, which were uh, mentioned in, in the Bab, in the chapter of uh, uh, trading, you know? So I used to present examples from the classical era of the, uh, uh, I mean, the era of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So if you make pupils of Madrasa aware with the modern sciences, uh, I, I would say to the intermediate or A-levels, so this, uh, gap between secular and religious uh, uh, people, I think it will shrink itself. It will shrink uh, itself, itself and there will be no much gap. Just like if we see in 18th and 17th, 19th century, uh, every scholar, uh, religious scholar, he has the same word and importance and, 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 and intellectualism. Just uh, I would say, if you are going to compare between Shibli Nomani and Amir Ali, you, you would not see much difference between of them. And uh, you, you, you can see other scholar as well. Abul Kalam Azad, he was, he, he was a scholar, but he has a good sense of society. So that's why if you compare between Abul Kalam Azad and any other person, you will not, any other intellectual, just like his contemporary Zakir Hussain, you will not see any difference between them. Because first of all, they got a good sense of society. So I think that's the problem. And, uh, uh, and uh, this is very clear in, uh, if you interact with mother of people right now. The second question, uh, hadith uh, subcontinent ulama they went to Hijaz and got hadith from there and uh, brought back this hadith studies and started to promote it in South Asia. And uh, whether the Wahhab, introduction of Wahhabism in subcontinent is a part of this learning, I don't think so be, uh, because uh, 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 
the earlier scholar in this regard, uh, I would say it was Abdullah Dehlvi Ramutulale. He went to Hijaz and, and, and came back to Delhi and established his own madrasa. But I say this madrasa did not influence any person. Yeah, Abdul Haq Dehlvi Ramutulale influenced Ahmed Sarhindi Ramutulale, Mujadid al -Fisani. And his grandson, only two person. And some people say, just like uh, Muhammad Isaki has written Indian contribution to the study of Hadith. The book was published by uh, Madras University, I think, in 1851. So he tried to highlight this, that Abdullah Dehlvi Rahmatullah influenced on Shah Walula and his father. I don't think so. Uh, uh, he could influence, he could only influence his grandson and Ahmad Sanandi Rahmatullah, and uh, he influenced no one else. Shaurullah when came back from Hijaz, you know, Shaurullah Rahmatullah was the student of Abu Tahir Kurdi. And Abu Tahir Kurdi, Abu Tahir Kurdi, he was the sheikh of, uh, of Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab Rahmatullah. Uh, not Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab Rahmatullah and Sheikh Muhammad Hayat Sindhi from Ghoti. So when Shaurullah came from Hijaz, there was no Wahhabism at all. Yeah, this is true. When Shah Ismail Shahid Rahmatullah went with Ahmad Bareli, uh, Ahmed Bareli Rahmatullah to Hijaz and came back from there. So he was influenced by Wahhabi Tahrir. This is true. This is true because uh, as I talked about Shah Walula tradition, uh, Shah Walula Rahmatullah, Shah Abdulaziz Halvi Rahmatullah and Shah Isa, all of them, they were Hanafi. And yeah, they tried to bring some changes and, 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 and they tried to strike on, on the rigid taqlid. They tried to remove it from the minds of subcontinent people, but they never left Hanafi fiqh. Hanafi, they never left it. When Shah Ismail Shi Ramatullah came, he was influenced by Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab Ramatullah. And this is true. And we see a lot of evidences in this regard. And uh, that's why you will see the last uh, uh, representative of Waliullah family, Shah Ishaq Ramatullah, who was successor of Shah Abdulaziz Jalwi. He was not happy with he, Shah Ishaq Ramatullah and Shah Yaqub. Both of them, they were not happy with Shah Ismail Shi Ramatullah and what he was doing. So, yeah, Shah Abdulaziz Ramatullah endorsed Ahmad Bareli Rahmatullah and appreciated it and wrote some letter to, to a scholar in different parts of subcontinent when he traveled to Lucknow and other parts of India. He lettered, uh, he wrote letter of support for Ahmad Bareli Rahmatullah, but for social reforms and 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 and, and some 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 unity of Muslim, some unification of Muslim against Marhatta and and, and Sikh people, and uh, uh, you will see the dispute which wa was between Muslim at that time. So Shah Abdulaziz Dehlvi Ramatullah, even though, even though he issued the Fatwa Darul Haq, but uh, he was not against uh, British government. This is very clear. I, I don't want to indulge. If someone has, he can uh, talk to me in my office in university. So, uh, uh, so Wahhabism impacted uh, not by Hadith, because Shah Ismail Shahid Ramatullah was not the scholar of Hadith. If you see his books, just like Taqwiyat al-Iman, other books, he just only quoted hadith from Mishkat, nothing else, only from Mishkat. You will not see any hadith from big books of hadith, just like classical, I mean Bukhari and Muslim. He is quoting Mishkat and Masabir. And there are studies that his, his, uh, his capacity in hadith, he was very good, uh, good reformer, but he was not a hadith scholar, just like Shah Walil or Shah Abdul Aziz or Shah Ishaq or even Mian Nazirus and Mautizel. So I think Wahhabism came later. Uh, uh, with Shah Ismail Shahi Rahmatullah and, 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 and uh, Mia Nazir Hussain Mahdi Zalwiya, it emerged a lot in this regard. Yeah, I would, yeah. If you have some other question, I, uh, yeah, I can respond. Uh, Jazakumullah khair. I think we are uh, 22 minutes um, uh, above our scheduled time. So we shall close it here. Thank you very much for giving us uh, uh, opportunity to listen to your lecture. And I thank you everyone who participated uh, in, in today's lecture with apologies uh, due to um, lack of uh, opportunities for asking questions and uh, the frequent disruption of internet. Uh, we hold these uh, monthly lectures um, on the last Saturday of every month. And um, uh, the recordings of these lectures are also available on our Facebook page, www.facebook.com slash Global Center Peace. And our YouTube uh, channel www.youtube.com slash at global center uh, peace. So the recording of this lecture will also be available there. Um, you are requested to join our Facebook page and YouTube uh, channel. Um, subscribe to it and uh, 
share these as much as possible and um, uh, stay tuned with our future uh, activities um, on there. So um, inshallah, we'll see you again next month uh, with a new lecture. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.